Ahoy friends, welcome to Small Boat Adventures. I'm Dan, and today I'm going to be giving a description of the construction of my sailing dory, Udfor Skaven, which is a replica of the famous transatlantic sailing dory, Centennial which uh, was sailed across the Atlantic Ocean in 1876 by Alfred Johnson. The story of Centennial is a long and rich one, which uh, deserves a video of its own. So I won't get too much into the history, but uh, you know, a brief description of uh, the original boat is probably uh, well worthwhile. Um, Alfred Johnson was a Danish immigrant living in, who settled in Gloucester, Massachusetts, and uh, was involved in the fisheries, uh, dory fishing out of Gloucester. To celebrate the 100 year anniversary of the United States, Johnson had Higgins and Gifford dory builders of Gloucester, build him a dory, which he then sailed across the Atlantic Ocean in uh, 56 days. He went through a couple storms and uh, had all sorts of adventures along the way. He departed Gloucester and uh, landed in Liverpool, and this was, uh, he sailed from uh, from June through uh, August, so it was uh, summer on the North Atlantic, which was, uh, you know, provided plenty of challenges. In the 1970s, John Gardner, then working at Mystic Seaport, traveled to uh, Gloucester to take the measurements, take the lines of Alfred Johnson's dory, which had survived the uh, the a hundred years or so, um, uh, stored in various spots around Gloucester and Rockport, and was at the time uh, in the Gloucester Historical Society. Gardner included the lines for Centennial in Chapter Six page 53 of his book Wooden Boats to Build and Use. I photocopied the uh, line set and table of offsets from John Gardner's book and uh, so that I wouldn't damage the book out in the shop and started, you can see the uh, papers there on the bottom boards, and started building the boat in uh, July 2016. It's a big dory. The bottom is 16 feet. And uh, I made it up out of uh, <clears throat> fairly narrow bottom board stock so that it wouldn't move too much because it's such a heavy bottom. And I knew I was going to be f wanting to fiberglass it. So, uh, yeah, those are two by stock cut down, uh, planed down to, uh, to one and a quarter inch, uh, thick. So it's pretty heavy for bottom boards. So, uh, he struck, used a batten, like you saw in the previous photo, to strike a line and uh, cut the bottom to shape. As you can see, I've got a, a clamp there, clamping the planks together and uh, cutting the shape of the bottom and planing the uh, boards so that they'll uh, fit together. The uh, bottom is an important part of the dory construction because it's basically the keel. And the shape of the bottom 
ends up dictating really the shape of the hull all the way up to the rail because the frames are set on the bottom at, uh, at spaces fore, fore and aft, but the shape of the bottom is what dictates the positioning of the frames and then hence the shape of the hull. Here I've got the bottom into the shop and uh, the final shape is cut and uh, there's bevel cut into it as well and you can see that I've uh, cut some cross cleats, some pine, all the bottom is pine as well, some pine cross cleats and those cross cleats are riveted to the bottom. Here I've got the uh, boards, the white oak boards that make up the transom uh, cut to shape and you can see there's a uh, oak spline uh, along the glue joint where those two boards glue together. A uh, two board transom is pretty uh, typical especially in the uh, bank stories and the, uh, the running the run of the grain run straight along the edge of either of those two boards. You can see one board does the entire length of the transom and the other board is just sort of a triangle set in there um, with its grain oriented at an angle to the first board. But when you put the boards in together in that way, then there's no run out at the uh, top corners of the transom where they'd be susceptible to cracking where the uh, shear plank goes in so it makes for a nice strong uh, transom here's the stem on the uh, bench in the shop and I'm uh, cutting the shape of the stem out there, cutting the bevel, the rough bevel into the uh, stem. As I was laying out the boat, I was using patterns from a previous uh, centennial hull that I'd built uh, maybe four years before. So I had, uh, I took patterns of that first boat and kept them. The first boat that I built was a little bit shorter than at the actual full-size Centennial. It was only 18 feet, whereas Centennial is a big, uh, a big 20 foot, um, a big 20 foot halibut dory. But uh, all the parts and pieces were the same size otherwise. I just made the boat shorter. So there it is. Uh, I've cut the shape of the stem and now I'm, I've got a bunch of cuts diagonally to cut the bevel for the stem and you can see there's a, a chisel and uh, I'm knocking out where I made the ank where I made the beveled cuts so knock knocking out with a chisel between the uh, saw cuts and then I'll finish that with a plane here are the uh, glue up for uh, the frames. You can see the uh, frames have a slight amount of curvature to the arms of the frames, so the sides of the boat have a very slight amount of curve, which uh, you know, we're not exactly sure what Banks dories looked like at the time, but this is the oldest existing uh, Higgins and Gifford Banks story, so it's you know possible that they had that slight camber to the frames and then at the time uh, very similar to uh, the St. Pierre dories you know that were in use right up through the 20s and 30s and 40s uh, and beyond uh, up along uh, the coast of, uh, of Canada Alright, so here I am nailing the frames to the bottom. You can see the bottom is already cleated together. And I've got the bottom tipped up on uh, sawhorses. And I'm just uh, positioning those frames. They're all now assembled and trimmed and whatnot. And uh, riveted together at the uh, joints. 
So I'm nailing those frames, putting nails up through the bottom of the dory and into the oak frames. So the uh, oak is really good framing material, stem, stern, and whatnot, because it holds the uh, ring nails so well. So you'll put the uh, you'll put the nail through the pine and into the oak, and then that it's not going anywhere, you know. It's not going to pull out of the oak. With the uh, frames attached securely to the bottom with ring nails, uh, now it's time to uh, bend the bottom of the dory onto the bed. You can see that uh, frame below the dory is called the building bed, and that's uh, nailed securely to the shop floor. And it's raised, it's a, it's a uh, sort of uh, plank structure that's uh, raised um, maybe uh, 14 inches or so off the floor so that the dory is at a comfortable working height. Um, and it's essentially a strong back that uh, I can brace the dory from the ceiling of the shop down to the floor of the shop and that bed is leveled so that way the uh, entire bottom is level when it's braced in position there. Here I am uh, positioning and nailing the uh, stem to the, uh, to the bottom and uh, same situation with the stern. The stern gets a uh, stern knee that's cut out to brace the transom, and the step, but the stem has basically a built-in knee. When you fashion the stem, you cut a, a knee into the bottom of it, so you can just nail it right to the bottom of the boat. So in this shot, the uh, Stem is in place, braced to the ceiling. The transom is in place, uh, clamped to the back wall of the shop. All of the kick sticks are in bending the correct rocker into the bottom of the boat and bracing it to the uh, building bed. And uh, you can see that I've got a, um, I've got the uh, garboard plank on the starboard side nailed on. The uh, garboard planks on the story uh, I built with uh, marine plywood and the rest of the planking is pine. In this image the uh, other garboard plank is on and I am um, back at the transom cutting the uh, cutting the bevel for or refining the bevel for the next uh, the number one planks that's going to go on. Uh, you can see the uh, backing block for bucking the rivets is uh, there just ahead of the can that's in the bottom of the boat. Um, yeah, so this is uh, sort of a traditional method of building a bank story braced from the ceiling uh, right side up and you rivet the planks as you put them on. So the uh, planks are plywood, or as I said the garboards are plywood and those were uh, scarfed together and those were made up out of a uh, big sheet of 10 foot plywood that I got, so I was able to get one scarf uh, in the middle of the garboard, pretty much. Marine fur. This is cutting the uh, scarf joints for the uh, first pine plank, the first strake of pine planking. I've got a uh, adze there that I'm swinging between my legs and uh, <clears throat> cutting off big chunks of pine, rough cutting the uh, scarf joint, and then I'll finish that scarf joint up on the uh, bench with a hand plane. It's uh, pretty much the quickest way to cut these joints. 
Uh, other folks, you know, sometimes use power tools and whatnot, but by the time you get everything set up and plugged in and whatnot, it's usually just as quick to uh, cut it with the with the adds and the plane. Once the scarf joint is cut, I uh, glue it up and uh, nail it down to the shop floor uh, for the uh, glue to dry. It makes for a good uh, surface for the gluing with a uh, piece of wax paper uh, covering the joint both sides. It, uh, it's easy to get up off the floor and just pull the nails out and then I can uh, put rivets through the nail holes that are made when I'm, you know, the, the nails are basically the clamps that hold the scarf together while it's gluing. And then I can fill those nail holes with, uh, with copper rivets as sort of a permanent uh, mechanical fastening that's uh, in addition to the glue that's in the uh, scarf joint. After the uh, scarf joint is cut and glued, then the uh, plank is uh, finished, finished thickness um, to uh, uh, five eighths thickness, um, and uh, the uh, final planing just sort of cleans up the scarf joint, cleans any. Uh, any uh, glue seep out on and brings the the two planks that were scarfed together right down to a nice uh, uniform thickness. With the uh, final thickness on the uh, board I can hang the board on the boat and get the shape of the plank. Uh, it's a sort of uh, a simple way of spiling the planks, you know, just hanging them directly on the boat. And, uh, yeah, it worked out really well in this, uh, building Oud for Skaven. Um, you can see Centennial is only a four-plank dory. She's got big, wide planks. Uh, she goes together pretty quickly. There's not a lot of curvature to those frames. Um, but the fact that there is curvature means that there's a little bit of shape to each plank. Uh, the plank, each each hull plank tapers at the ends and is a little bit wider amidships because of that curvature. Uh, it's just the way the geometry works out. And uh, you can see I've got the first pine plank hung there, and then I'll just take a pencil on the inside and trace the top edge of the uh, plank below it onto the plank above and then use that line to cut the uh, shape of the plank. Also, the, the this is a good photo of the uh, building bed. You can kind of see some of the structure of the bed and the blocking underneath the uh, bottom that uh, bends that those bottom boards into the correct uh, the correct rocker. You know the bow bends up and the transom bends up, and she's a bit deeper in the middle. Here you can see that uh, first plank is uh, on the boat, and the uh, gains are cut into it, and you can see it's curving back. Uh, and it's nailed to the transom back there. Alright, here she is with planks on both sides. You may be able to see at the uh, stem there, the, um, the finishing of the planks is uh, sort of an old time way of uh, finishing a stem. Uh, one plank passes by the other plank and is cut off uh, flush to the face of the first plank that went on. So the uh, planks themselves basically overlap each other one after another as they go up the stem and that's what forms the cut water. There is no false stem on this boat.
there's a number of knots in the pine planking that's going on, which is actually a good thing. They're all tight knots, and uh, they help strengthen the uh, planks, keep them from splitting along the grain. Some more planing of more planking. There's, uh, like I say, four planks per side that need to go on. That's a little portable uh, planer, a, a craftsman, which uh, had done a floor before I got a hold of it. So it's seen quite a bit of use, and uh, sometimes the drive isn't so great on it. So you can see I've got a stick there where I'm helping push the planks through. But it's a good little machine and uh, allows me to bring it outside and plane outdoors um, when, uh, you know, when the weather's right. So here's a, uh, the next plank on number two plank and you can see the curvature in it. The, um, you can see the shape that's in these, uh, that's in this plank. Uh, along its length. Like I was saying, there's a little bit of curve to the sides and that's uh, the shape that results. And here's that plank going on the boat. You can see I've got a uh, stick bracing it over to the uh, wall of the shop and a couple clamps on there and it will get bronze ring nails into the uh, white oak stem that you see sticking up. This is the third plank going on the boat. Got clamps on the plank there as it goes along the frames and then I'll be putting a ring nail through the plank at each of the frames and it goes through the outside plank then through the inside plank bottom edge of the outside plank, top edge of the inside plank, and then into that oak frame. Then the, uh, the planks are riveted along that joint with copper rivets. Makes a nice uh, watertight, airtight uh, joint there. So in this uh, photo you can see that piece of wood going across the two uh, the two uh, number two planks, the third planks on the boat. That piece of wood is, uh, and just below it in the photo you can see a, a level. So that, you set the level on that piece of wood with one plank already nailed to the boat and then you can adjust the other plank that you're getting ready to hang, adjust to the height of that so that your uh, so that your two planks are the same height on either side of the boat use the level to make sure that they're the same height and since you leveled the boat when you nailed the when you uh, braced the bottom to the floor when you put the put it on the bed made sure that bottom was level then the uh, planks come out level here i am nailing the uh, fourth plank to the uh, starboard side to the stem. You can see the uh, shop doors there and there's a uh, green tarp, tarpaulin, uh, rolled up that uh, I had to take one of the boards off the other door, the door that's open, in order for the, do for the barn door to close. So that green tarpaulin hangs down over both of the doors and the uh, opening where the stem is sticking out, the missing board, and uh, keeps the snow and rain out. So yeah, you can kind of get a feel also of just how big a door it is. I'm starting to run out of room there in the overhead. The uh, stem was so tall. That piece of uh, wood beside me is the stub the stump of the mast, the tabernacle mast. And here's some uh, spar building. This is the mast. I've got a uh, big piece of sandpaper there 
And what I did was I, uh, the mast is uh, spruce, uh, glued up out of two, uh, two inch planks, two by 10 planks. The uh, mast is three inches in diameter. And so I uh, glued up a blank, you know, squared it, and then eight sided the, the uh, square, and then 16 sided it, and then what is it, 32 sided it, I guess, or, you know, pretty much used the plane to eyeball it to round, and then I'm uh, sort of roughing the round out with that uh, piece of sandpaper there, which has two blocks of wood screwed to it so you can pull the sandpaper back and forth just kind of finish rounding out the spar here I am uh, working on the probably the gaff planing the gaff and there's either the gaff or the boom it's tough to tell that looks like it may be the gaff as well I've got it clamped in place and then uh, you know, sanding it to round. Here's one of the uh, an end of the, one of the frames, the white oak frames. And uh, you can see the spars down inside the boat. Now they're, uh, I've got them all shaped. And, and uh, you can see the jaws to the uh, boom, the boom jaws. And looks like I've got a, got some paint on them as well. Here's the other, uh, the fourth plank going on the port side. And that's the uh, final plank to go on. So yeah, pretty happy about that. You can see the uh, bed again in this shot underneath the boat. It's holding the boat up that the uh, bottom's braced to. And, uh, yeah, you can see the way the, uh, the plank that I'm putting on is overlapping the plank on the other side, so it's passing by uh, the, the uh, stem bevel. So the plank on the other side is cut just to the length and shape of the plank that's going on. And it's got a little notch in the bottom edge of the plank so that it uh, fits in perfectly with the uh, gains that are cut in the, in the plank that's going over it. Here's the rail going on. It's a, uh, I built a Oud Skaven with a solid rail. It's really tough to tell how Centennial was built. Uh, she's in the museum there, and uh, it's pretty tricky to get up in under the deck and whatnot. But uh, it looks looked to me from when I was looking at her in the museum that she's got a solid rail as well, which would make a lot of sense because she's based on a working dory. Um, even though the boat probably doesn't need that for strength with the uh, with the whole deck on, because that imparts a huge amount of strength to the hull. Here's uh, another shot of the solid rail going in. Uh, you can see it's just blocking basically that uh, goes in between the frames and then a, uh, a final sort of uh, cap goes will go along the inside and in my case, the deck goes over the top, but if this were just a, a straight working dory without a deck on it, then there'd be a, a sawn cap that goes over that, cut to shape. And the, everything would be nailed together, and that's what makes the solid rail. Here's uh, fitting the centerboard. And let's see, there, there's the centerboard case going together. I made the uh, centerboard case out of plywood, uh, marine ply, and uh, finished the inside before I nailed it to get nailed and glued it together. And here it is going in uh, with a uh, spot cut between the frames and the cleats in the bottom, so that the uh, center case can be uh, screwed down and glued down.
made watertight there in the middle of the boat. The uh, centerboard on Udforskaven is a different shape than on the original Centennial. It's got that L shape to it, you could see in the uh, previous photo. Which, um, the long leg of the L goes, gets glued and screwed to the bottom of the boat. And that means that there's, in the original boat, there's the centerboard case uh, completely separates the below decks area, totally bisects it. Whereas in this, there's that cutout so that there's more room below and the whole below decks isn't separated into two halves by the centerboard case. Here's the centerboard case in place, screwed down and fastened into position. And you can see it's that L shape, so there's a, you know, a fair amount of room below deck. Uh, you can crawl from one side to the other, uh, you know, across the top of the centerboard case under the deck. Here's the deck beams going in. You can see that they're uh, notched into the solid rail, and the deck beams are spruce, fairly light, not too heavy. Uh, they're nailed in and glued along the glued at the corners as well as being notched into the rail. More deck beams going in place. Center ward boxes in. Here now the deck is uh, taking shape. You can see the openings. That's looking towards the transom. You can see the transom against the shop wall there. And uh, there, the uh, aft hatch, which is something that is different uh, between Udforskaven and the original Centennial. She didn't have a, a stern hatch like that. I wanted to be able to uh, access that aft flotation area so I could store stuff in there. And it makes her much more useful um, coastal cruising boat to have that extra storage space and uh, you know hopefully not quite as quite as uh, as dangerous as going offshore so uh, you know you've got that hatch and I do have the ability to tie those hatches down if I do you know go out into the ocean or whatever here's the uh, mast partners I'm cutting the mast partners out of a, a solid block of spruce. This is uh, all going to be uh, nailed and glued into the decking. Here you can see that, uh, here you can see the mast partners going in and the um, and the stub mast uh, is going in as well, testing it out in there. You can see it piercing the uh, the hole in the deck where the partners are. Now you can also see the uh, top of the centerboard trunk there to the right. The uh, drill is right, the handle of the drill is on it, and uh, you can make out a couple of the lodging knees that brace the uh, centerboard trunk to the deck beams as well in this photo. There's a, a spar on the deck there that's uh, socketed into a big heavy cleat and that goes forward, that's the uh, bowsprit, but I actually ended up making a different bowsprit. When I put this one on it looked a little bit light, so I ended up making a heavier bowsprit. Here's the deck starting to go on. You can see there's a piece of plywood uh, back near the stern, and I'm tracing the uh, shape of the plywood off the, uh, off the deck, and then uh, cutting it out and nailing and gluing it down. Here uh, we've jumped ahead a bit, I've got all the plywood on, and now I'm cutting uh, these uh, thin pine planks and layering that over the uh, quarter inch plywood deck. So it's like a double deck. I wanted it to have the uh, look of the plank deck that the original Centennial has. 
but I also wanted to make sure that I didn't have a leaky deck so that's why I put the plywood underneath just made everything quite a bit easier not trying to cock between the planks and the deck here's the uh, plank deck laid and the uh, openings in the uh, deck openings are all cut you can see back towards the stern there's a, a plywood bulkhead in that uh, just ahead of the last frame and that's a uh, that's a waterproof uh, bulkhead that separates the stern uh, area and the stern hatch opening from the uh, from the main hull from the center uh, from the cargo hold and the uh, forward areas in the boat Here's the boat out of the shop, and you can kind of get a feeling for the size of the dory. Uh, the next thing to do with the boat out of the shop is to roll it over and to uh, trim the shape of the bottom. And that's what's being done here. You can see I've uh, cut the uh, garboard plank, which was overhanging the bottom originally. I've cut the garboard plank so it's flush with the bottom and uh, so sawed it and then sanded it smooth and then there'll be a, a coat of uh, glass set in uh, set in tight bond 3 waterproof wood glue and the glass covers the bottom of the boat and then uh, ends at that first, uh, where the first lap starts. So you cut it off right at the first lap. Here I am sanding that, uh, that chine joint and, uh, you know, just getting it ready to go. Yeah, there's a fair amount of prep work to get this bottom ready to, uh, ready to take the glass. You can see, uh, at the top edge of the photo, the, um, centerboard slot has been cut through the bottom and into the box and the glass wraps over that and up into the box. Here's the interior. Uh, there's some oil on the uh, on the planks on the inside and the uh, centerboard box has yet to be cut. I tried to paint as much as I could on the interior, the uh, the uh, deck beams and the underside of the deck and some of the frames and whatnot before I put the deck on. Uh, but you can see I didn't paint the bottom, so I'm putting some green. Uh, it's taped off. I'm gonna paint the bottom green up to the first uh, up to the first of the garboard plank. Okay, here the boat has a, a coat of primer on the outside of the hull. And uh, you can see the hatch combings are now framed in. Here's bending the rails, putting some pre-bend in the rails that are uh, going on, the, the tow rails that go the length of the deck. And here's the uh, hatch combings painted with the uh, tow rail screwed down in place. Yeah, it's uh, really coming along now. The king, pa king planks are painted as well. The, the plank that goes along the center of the hull. Uh, a big wide plank that goes down the middle of the boat. I've got the uh, transom is finally cut to shape. I left the transom long while I was building the boat. And so I've, uh, with those rails on, now I can cut the, uh, cut the transom off to the correct height and put the uh, sculling notch in there. Here's the, uh, the deck is now has uh, some stain on it, some oil on it, and uh, getting ready to paint the uh, top sides. 
the boat's out, and I'm uh, actually fitting the uh, the new bow spread that I was gonna make. It's beefier than the one that I started out with, and uh, you can see there's uh, there's some uh, cat heads there either side of the bow spread to uh, keep the bow spread in position, and then there's a uh, the forestay attaches just above that so that the bowsprit can be taken in and out. Here I am inside uh, taking a little break while I uh, paint the interior. I had a fan going the whole time I was in there to blow the uh, smell of the uh, oil paint out, keep the air moving. Here she is with the uh, Centennial's iconic uh, red, white, and blue paint job. So the uh, garboard plank and the number one plank are blue, and then the next one's white and the top one's red there. Here's the uh, mast coming together, the cross trees that the, uh, the shrouds hang off of. You can see uh, up there in white, and then the uh, the part of the mast that the sail runs on is uh, just varnished with spar varnish. Here I am doing more painting. Painting the uh, tow rails, the inside of the tow rail. It's got a red stripe along the top. And here she is uh, out in the sunshine with the um, with the paint job and it looks like this may be getting close to uh, launch day. We ended up launching her on uh, July 4th. Seemed fitting. So. Oh, this was a uh, pretty nasty hot day trying to get the center board in. I eventually got it. <laughs> you can see there the center board hanging out of the uh, slot. It, uh, it lowers to about uh, 40 degrees or so. That's as far down as it goes. Yeah, this is the morning of launch day. Got a little bunting there. And uh, you can see the, uh, the, the mast is in the tabernacled mast, which is folded down at this point. And yeah, big, uh, big celebration. It was a great day. Had a bunch of uh, folks show up and had a uh, cookout breakfast and then dragged the boat down to the river and dumped her in. And uh, yeah, what a great, uh, what a great day. Um, the, uh, the woman to the left of the uh, photo is the great, great, great-granddaughter, or the great-great-granddaughter of uh, Alfred Centennial Johnson, who sailed Centennial across the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, yeah, I invited her out for the uh, launching, and uh, she was able to show up, so that was really uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, big day. And here she is in the water. Launch day. Ta-da. Uh, I still had a fair amount of work to do on the boat. Uh, deck hatches, the main hatch. Uh, still had to make the sails and whatnot and put the rig together, but uh, I put it in the water and then slept out in it that evening. So I got, a, uh, was, got treated to the fireworks as I was rowing down river and slept aboard. And here she is uh, at the schooner races over in Gloucester just this year. So this is uh, 2021. So this is, uh, you know, five years after the launching. And uh, she's uh, got the name painted on her. You can see Av Av Avene there. Avon. And Udforsk is on the other side. So that uh, Udforskaven is a, a Danish phrase that was actually in a book that uh, 
that uh, Alfred Johnson's great-great-granddaughter gave me, and it means uh, oceans to explore. So here we are off of uh, Fisherman's Beach in Gloucester during the uh, Parade of Sail this past uh, Labor Day. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to, uh, like I said, make a, several more videos about this boat. Um, I'd like to do sort of a tour of the uh, boat, the deck, the rig, do a tour of the interior as well. I'm not sure if that'll be the same video or not. And then also I'd like to do a, a history video of uh, Johnson and his crossing. And uh, maybe sort of a compare and contrast, uh, like a uh, description of the sailing qualities of my boat and uh, some of the differences that between the boat I built and Johnson's original Centennial. Anyway, thanks a lot for uh, stopping by Small Boat Adventures. And uh, thanks so much for all of your uh, support, questions, comments, subscribes, and all that. If it weren't for you guys, you know, this uh, channel wouldn't be possible. So, you know, thanks again, and we'll see you next video. Have a great day.